Okay, so let's dive in and start to talk around these different um, traffic sources that we've got, different channels that we can use to reach new customers, right? Um, and we'll start to put together some of the logic. What do we know about particular channels? So let's start with SEO, probably my favorite because I started blogging in 2004. And so I've got you know, one to 2000 visitors coming to my website every day, um, all looking for different things, huge variety of things that they, that they want. Um, and that's pretty much free traffic. Yes, I've invested quite a lot of time over the years in creating content, and I'm still doing that. So um, it's certainly not cheap, uh, not free, but the, the actual monetary cost is, is uh, relatively low. And that traffic um, is, you know, has been coming for 12 years now and is going to keep coming for a while. So SEO is definitely a long-term strategy. Right? Websites get better um, the more established they are. They get better at ranking. So web design from scratch is, you know, is now in a very good position because it's a cumulative effect. Every link, every social share, it all helps to um, further establish your, your presence for, for ranking. So if you're, if you're in business for the long term, SEO could be um, uh, useful and important. The flip side is that you, you have to consider, well, what are people actually typing in to Google or other search engines? Um, obviously, if you're in a commodity space, if you're addressing a problem that lots of other people are also, also addressing, if there's lots of competition for the exact things that people want, then you may not be able to rank, you know, or it may take you an awful long time to rank. So it's certainly not a... Um, it's not completely free and open for everybody. You know, there's a lot of competition out there already. So you need to consider, well, you know, what can I rank for? What terms are people typing in? And um, something that we always need to think about is possibly reframing. I'll give you one example. Uh, I've got a client I've been w uh, working with um, on strategy and this client makes... Uh, oils and tinctures that are great for pain relief, right? They use uh, traditional Chinese recipes. Um, they're all organic ingredients, very high quality. No one really cares. This is the interesting thing. Um, people, there's very, very few people looking for what he's selling. So what we need to do is we need to reframe the the problem, the question, whatever we're doing. So um, I've done some research and I've, I've discovered there's quite a gold mine for potential traffic in back pain. Lots of different types of back pain, lower left side back pain, lots of different variations that we could actually address. But and this is a, you know, a real strategic repositioning. So instead of going for organic pain relief tinctures, right? Um, my advice is let's actually build something for the back pain market and on the back of that because we give so much content um, we really inform people we build trust it's a significant amount of work um, on the back of that then we hope to be able to build a list and um, and sell sell the product but it's it's a, a very different way of thinking than just to say okay well what are we selling let's charge straight at that <clears throat> now sometimes of course that can work so let's think about pay-per-click a little bit pay-per-click is completely different to SEO pay-per-click you can switch it on you can switch it off from one minute to the next it's you know the the beauty of it is that it's it's so available you can switch it on and switch it off the um, the downside obviously is that um, you you pay for those clicks that's why it's called pay-per-click um, and you've got very different modes as well, which we need to consider. Google Search Network. So if people type something into Google Search, um, you can buy your place in those results. Now, interestingly, the side column, the right-hand side ads have now disappeared, which is, means that the, uh, the ads going at the top of the organic results 
are likely maybe to get a bit bigger and push organic results down, which is going to you know tilt the playing field a little bit when it comes to um, pay per click and, and SEO, but we'll deal with it. Um, so pay per click immediate thing. So yeah, search network. If somebody is typing in a, a, a specific term and you know that that term has intent, right? So anyone who types that in is very likely to be looking for what I'm offering, basically. If if you're in that kind of situation, then great, you can go for that pay-per-click. The, the other beautiful thing about it is it's very measurable. You can have tracking pixels that track when somebody's made a purchase or um, signed up for a mailing list or whatever. So all good. Um, the display network is distinctly different. That's when people aren't typing the thing into the search engine. Um, that you're just on a page on a third party site that happens to be um, on a particular topic. So Google, as it goes around um, indexing all these pages, it tries to figure out what the pages are about, what people might want when they're on them. So advertisers can then put ads on for Google. I do it um, on Web Design from Scratch and it tries to put up relevant ads. So uh, not a different way of thinking for the search network compared to um, display network and then of course you've got Facebook ads Facebook targets uh, people completely differently to these other um, to the two Google channels that you've got um, you know Google knows what you're searching for or what content you're looking at pay Facebook doesn't really know those things but what Facebook knows is what you like what your profile is your age your location all that kind of stuff so Facebook knows all the profiling stuff that can sometimes be a huge benefit. If you want to target ads and you know really make every click count, you want to, and, and you know a demographic profile for your target market, then maybe Facebook pay-per-click can work as well. Uh, obviously, Facebook pay-per-click is newer, newer onto the market. Um, what we'll find is that any channel that comes onto the market will get more saturated over time. Competition will hot up and you'll start to reach um, a kind of a natural plateau for bids for what people are actually prepared to pay. Um, so pay-per-click, I mean, Perry Marshall is fond of saying that you can use pay-per-click almost to, to test your competitiveness on the market. If people are paying $5 for a click on a particular term, right, that means that they are making more than $5 back from that average click. Question is, can you make $5 back from those clicks? If not, what is it? Why are you not converting as well? So, you know, so it's a, a real, real live test for that. Um, social media, let's move on to that just a little bit. There's lots and lots of different channels in social media. I do not recommend that everybody should, you know, jump on SEO or jump on social or jump on email marketing. I don't recommend any specific technique as being universally beneficial. It's not. There are lots of brands who really should be doing nothing on social media or the absolute minimum. Um, we've obviously done a Facebook course that's out there for free. And um, so, yeah, so social on Facebook, got that pretty much nailed down. There's a kind of a, a business profile. And if you match that, so basically, have you got a reason to communicate with your customers on a regular basis? And have they got reason to communicate back with you on a regular basis? If that's not the case, then Facebook is unlikely to be useful for you. Um, also do selling on Facebook as well. Uh, there's lots of other twi Twitter, Instagram, lots of other ways in which we can we can market socially, and we'll be working through all those in this series. Um, another question could be: Should you have a mailing list? Which is you know, really kind of the next phase. It's how you get people's uh, contact information and then start to nurture that relationship. But it's something that we all need to be thinking about because the the traffic channels that you select need to you need to think about that in the context of what are you going to do when people get there okay so uh, i'll just take a couple of examples snore razor um 
been working on for several months. The issue with that is that it's a $39 sale. Um, people are pretty highly motivated to solve their problem. And once you buy Snorra Razor, you don't need to buy it again. Right? It's a short-term tactic, short-term relationship. So Snorra Razor, we, we tried having a mailing list with that and getting people to sign up for a free trial and stuff. It actually worked much better not to do that at all and go straight for the sale. Right? So Snorra Razor is a business that doesn't need a mailing list. Another one that I've been working with, Health Nut Dad, Dot com. <clears throat> this is a, a blog, resources for uh, families, for parents who want to raise healthy family. Um, that's a long-term relationship. So obviously, it makes a lot of sense to have a mailing list there. Um, my mailing list is great. If I put out some new content, I just literally tell everybody. It doesn't take long. And then people will have a reason to come back to the site, share, like, engage, all of those good things. So Health Nut Dad definitely should have one. Um, also thinking about you know, Howie Jacobson's brand, he's got you know, um, Plant Yourself, and he's he sends out good newsletters. In addition to that, he also has a podcast, which is another great long-term uh, marketing uh, tactic, uh, strategy. So podcasts are cool for nurturing your tribe, so that as people come onto this, if your material is something that will come across um, orally, then it, you know podcasts make a lot of sense. It's also a really good way to interview other people. So you can bring experts onto your podcast. Everyone loves to be interviewed. You can get them to talk about their stuff. They get to promote their stuff to your crowd. You get extra content. And um, also going on other people's podcasts, again, it's a really good way to, uh, to reach new audiences and new groups of, of people um, and particularly because you can decide how you want to promote yourself how you want to be pitched to these people and the content that you give them which is great for earning trust um, that can also then be very much targeted at the value that you want to show so podcasts interviews all of these things can be really great um, so, you know, we should never overlook um, the concept of using partners, working with partners. Um, it's just worth building these relationships over time. And, and if there's, you know, one golden rule to all of this is give first. Always be the first to give and the last to give. Right, so just be generous with your time. Be generous with your ideas. Hold nothing back. Talk to anyone who wants to talk yeah if you can go and do two or three interviews per week stuff is going to grow for you it really is going to grow for you so you know reach out to those people offer to interview them offer them material all good stuff a um, couple of other things I want to just consider very briefly video like we're saying with podcasts um, some material works great um, listened Right, some material works great on video. Some material is better written down and read. We're going to tease a lot of these things apart um, over the process of the of the, this uh, course. Um, but obviously, video isn't right for certain situations. But at the same time, think about it in terms of uh, like organic SEO as well. Um, if people are typing in specific problem into Google and you can show them a solution. You can demonstrate to them visually that you can address their problem, then video can work very, very well indeed. And it can give you, obviously, a, uh, a shortcut onto the first page of results if Google is showing rich media results for that uh, search term. Um, so good for how-to stuff, good for the problem-solving kind of mindset as well. Um, YouTube obviously isn't the only place to um, to put your, your content. You can also use Wistia, Vimeo, um, and they have their particular strengths as well. And another one to be thinking about is ebooks um, and other 
kind of printable or, or written material. I think ebooks are actually really, really good. I'm constantly amazed that pretty much everybody who's ever hired me over the last few years has already read my books, right? So sharing your information, writing it down, telling everybody exactly what you do, how you do it, doesn't cannibalize your business because there's people at different levels in the market. When people need you, they will come and find you and that's more likely to happen if they've read a book. Um, so yeah, all, all good stuff. The um, Kindle publishing is fantastic. You know, I think the, the $2.99 price point, $2.99 upwards, you as a publisher get the greater share of the proceeds. I think it's about 80%. Um, so two ninety nine, is the price of a coffee, you know, in that US dollars. And so very, very good price point if you want to reach a lot of people. Um, so another whole context kind of angle on this, this whole question of marketing strategy is where are people already? You know, sometimes you don't need to build your own um, powerful traffic channel. Right, that, that you control. Uh, sometimes it's a case of, well, are there places where people already congregate? Maybe there are Facebook groups that are just crying out for this. Maybe there are partners who've already got that particular audience, right? Or in the case of Kindle publishing, there's already millions of people buying Kindle books every day. So, you know, we, we always need to think about the places where people are and what structures may already exist that we can just literally tap straight into. So that's a bit of a whistle-stop tour of many of the most significant um, traffic channels. Um, and we will now progress to dig deeper into all of those. So thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.